It's the 10th edition of the Cricket World Cup, the third in the subcontinent, and it gives me great pride, pleasure, and honor to introduce five of the seven World Cup winning captains right here on Times Now. Thank you very much, Clive Lloyd, for joining us on a very, very heart to heart open chat. Along sitting right next to him, 83 World Cup winning captain of India, Kapil Dev. It's an honor and a pleasure. Alan Borda. 87 World Cup winning captain. We've got a few questions to you coming oh, your way in just a bit. <laughs> Arjuna Ranatunga, you turned it around in 1996, put Sri Lanka on the cricketing map, didn't you? We'll come to you too. And of course, Steve Waugh, who's been there, done that. One question on Calcutta coming your way in just a short bit. But first up, you know, gentlemen, ahead of the Cricket World Cup, all of you are together because you want to keep cricket clean. Clive, my question to you. When you played cricket, it was fun, it was entertaining, and it was enthralling. It was amazing cricket. Do you believe Cricket today is as clean as it was in your playing days? Well, according to, to things, no. Um, but the point is that um, I still think people are enjoying the, the games. The unfortunate thing, because of the match fixing and so on that, that has um, gone on in the past, a team which genuinely bowls a side out cheaply or done extremely well, um, will, will be, you know, they'll have that sort of stigma. Uh, did, they, did they do this really on their own or? Was it sort of a fixed game? And I, I, that's the unfortunate part about it. But the point is, I think that we're getting there. It's, it's obvious that we're trying to clean the things up. And um, I'm sure that the cricketers still enjoy the game. And they'll continue to do so because it's their living. And um, we, we here, we would like to keep it, keep it clean as the, the answer. 1975, 1979, 1983. It was minnows or underdogs, teams from the subcontinent that caused you hiccups or robbed you of a hat-trick. Now this time around, 20, 25 years later on, the West Indies come to the subcontinent as underdogs. Do you think they can give, uh, do the same, turn it around? Well, I, I would think so. You, you never know in, in these sort of competitions. One day cricket is who plays well in the day. Um, and I, I'm looking around at the situation, some of the pitches, if they're not that well prepared, you know, it can cause a few upsets. We have, we have a pretty solid team at the moment. Um, and a couple of names, I think young Darren Bravo is a, cricket, a cricketer to watch. There's a, fella, a young fellow called Barrett um, from... He just got a hundred recently. Adrian, he got a hundred uh, two days ago uh, from Trinidad. So we have Craven, we have the, the Gale, if he blows, well, you never know. Um, he, can, he can upset quite a few uh, bowling attacks. So it, it's who plays well in the day, who plays as, as a team. And um, if the West Indies can do that, well, yes, I think they have a chance, just like everyone else. The man sitting next to you robbed you of a chance of a hat-trick of World Cup titles. We all see and still relive the moment couple of, you know, you lifting the World Cup at Lords. We know what happened, the celebrations there. I'm just going to ask Clive one question quickly. What happened in the West Indies dressing room that day? Well, nothing really. They played better than we did. Uh, it's no doubt about it. As I said, who played well in the day? Um, and we're still friends. It doesn't matter. It's <laughs> But the good thing about it is it did put uh, India in the, in the one-day mold. It's obvious they realized then that they can play one-day cricket and, and they were not just good enough for the longer game. So it had some good points about it. Um, surely we, we would have loved to, to have three in a, in a row, but it didn't happen. But um, we got to three finals and that's what you, you play. You play to get to the finals. But on that day, they, they, did, very, they did better than we did. Skipper, if I, what, if I yeah. take it from there, mm -hmm. We didn't rob anything, but we got all the champagne from their room. <laughs> because they already planned, because uh, definitely they, uh, they have planned uh, three in a row. And uh, they had lots and lots of champagne when I went to their room after. Well, you owe some champagne. Uh, yes, I owe some <laughs> champagne to them. And uh, we saw that, uh, you know, we didn't have much champagne in our room. So we said, well done, sorry guys, we put, pick up the bottles and start sharing in our dressing room. That's happened. In fact, you've been, uh, you know, you're admired, you're a legend, you're a living legend of Indian cricket. Only one bone to pick with you. You chose to play your best knock the day when the broadcasters were on strike. But what were you thinking <laughs> when you walked out, when you walked out against Zimbabwe in that situation? Did you think that you're going to go there and strike 175? I think I think every day I want to strike that way, but it doesn't happen. Uh, certain days grow, uh, God has created for you only. I think nothing goes wrong in everybody's life. It happened. Uh, some of the days is specially made for you. Perhaps that was the day uh, was created for me. And uh, fortunate or unfortunately, we, I can say in both the sense, uh, uh, the television wasn't there. So it was there. Not people wouldn't have asked him many times. 
So it wasn't there. So that's why people say, what kind of inning that was. So I don't know. I never thought. I don't think about the game. I just go. You practice hard. Go and play your game. And uh, on your day, if you can beat the opposition, that's more important. And uh, I, I think it's wrong if you start planning too much walking into the dressing, uh, out of the dressing room. It's just you have to play a normal game as what you learn. There's something called belief. You know? There's something called belief that you can win or you can do it. At what point, you know, 27 years down the line, can you reflect and say at what point did you as a captain, a player, an Indian honestly believe that that World Cup is going to come your way? Uh, you know, once we won against West, uh, West Indies the first match, the beliefs, you know, suddenly start in, in the dressing room. Oh, we beat in West Indies and we beat in West Indies just a month back in West Indies. And I think Zimbabwe match was one uh, a match where the situation was so bad and we come out and won the match. I think the self-belief in the team increased tremendously. From there onwards, uh, I didn't talk in the dressing room. We didn't have management who are six people traveling with you and trying to, you are the captain, you are the manager, and your manager is giving daily allowance not to talk about too much about cricket. So the team themselves was uh, managing each other. Uh, somewhere at that point people start believing you know I think we have a team who can you know upset uh, still until unless you don't win it it's not your cup so I think belief change uh, midway of the tournament when we start winning and we had the team and the people start performing and we didn't believe in one player and when the team start depending on one player that's the difficult part comes so I think in my team or our team we had too many people to come in different time to uh, sail through the team. Amazing. Two, two gentlemen who went on to Captain India later on didn't play the final. Ravi Shastri, Dilip Engsarko weren't part of the final playing squad that day. Alan, coming to you, what time did the belief, the will come in 87 that, you know, you're going to win the World Cup? Well, Was it when <laughs> Zahir Abbas said it's a bunch of club cricketers or when you got Mike Gadding out? You know? <laughs> well, um, yeah, probably not as simple. They're probably, uh, look, we were very much the underdogs and we understood that. We had a lot of young players. Uh, one of them was uh, on the end here. Yeah, he did. Uh, in that in that squad, uh, what we did do is we prepared very well. It was one of the first times we really targeted uh, a one-day tournament in particular. We played a fair bit of one-day cricket up to that point, but no real game plans per se. So we went in there. We became a very very good unit, a very good fielding side, and uh, tactically kept things very simple. But you know, just basic tackle tactics uh, going into games. Probably the first game against India was a, a key game for us. Um, being underdogs, you're not too sure where you, you're going to sit in the pecking order. But uh, that first game against India, uh, quite an interesting story came out of that. We made, uh, I think, 270 in our first innings, but it was actually 268 at the, at the turn of innings. And uh, I think it was Dean Jones had hit a ball over Ravi Shastri's head. And uh, we, we saw that it had gone over the line. Didn't have ropes in those days. Mm. It was a line on the, the ground. That had gone for for six, and I think Dino might have complained to uh, Dicky Bird, who was the umpire. And uh, at the luncheon break, uh, through our manager Alan Crompton, they went and sort of discussed with the match referee. He agreed, yes, he did see the ball go over the line. So our score was adjusted from 268 to 270. 270. And as history shows, uh, in, uh, India in reply made 269. So you don't know how those uh, momentum. You know, we lose the game by a run. Your, your tournament might have just drifted away, but you win the tournament uh, by uh, you win that game by a run. All of a sudden, you get the momentum and, and a bit of self-belief, as Caps, Caps was talking about, and it's just amazing what momentum does. 24 years down the line, we see Australia going through a similar phase, isn't it? And uh, you think you have a leader there in the Australian side, in Ricky Ponting, uh, who can turn it around this time around? Well, he's done it twice before, so he's a, he, he knows what it is to get the job done. So that's one tick. I mean, a lot will depend on how his injury heals and, and his own batting form um, escalates, you know, from now till when the tournament starts. Uh, we've got a lot of good senior cricketers there. Uh, our tactics will be based around a pace attack, which is a bit unusual maybe in this part. Everyone's talking about maybe spin being a, a major player in this tournament, but uh, Australia will go against the, the, the grain there. So. I think if they all fire, there's no chance, uh, no worries that they can win it. It's just a matter of, as you say, getting the momentum at the right time. 
Um, you know, winning quarter-final matches, those sort of games, you know, on the day. If you turn up, you can win. Well, tough people like to swim against the tide, just like the gentleman sitting to your left, sure. isn't it, Arjuna? 1996, whose idea was it? Sanat Jaisuriya and Kalu Vitarna to open and just go hammer and tongs. No, we had to create something. We were not the brilliant side. Like, we had Arvind the Distilla, one of the best batsmen produced in the world for me. And uh, we needed to rally around him, support him, and uh, look after the middle order. But in the meantime, we tried in Australia when we went to Australia about... A uh, couple of months prior to that, we tried opening with Kalvita. Arna. Sanat was opening. We put Sanat back maybe about a year before that. But Kalu was never comfortable opening. But then suddenly he opened in Melbourne, got a 60. And then we thought, okay, this is the plan. We should go to the World Cup. We'll go, go with two openers where we might get about 120 runs. Then the middle order can control. Because we never had any so-called match-winning bowlers. Our fielding was brilliant. Our bowling was, I will say, okay. Our batting was brilliant. We had batting up to number seven. Then we had um, uh, Mahanam and Tilakaratna batting uh, six and seven. Then we had Kumar Dharmasen and Vas who could bat, batting till nine. So we had the strength in our batting. So that's the main reason we decided, okay, we'll try and put the side in. Even if they get 300, we, we are comfortable chasing 300. I think that's the plan we had. I think it worked. And I, I think it didn't happen overnight. It, we planned... About six months back, we tried different players, we tried different bowlers. Ultimately, when it came to the World Cup, I think we picked at the right time. That's very, very important for any side to win a tournament. Did you know that Arvinda is going to turn out something special? The semi-final, the final was an Arvinda Arjuna show, wasn't it? When did you, uh, how did that happen? Did Arvinda De Silva come out and say, this looks to be my day and I'm going to do it? Or it just... No, that's, that's what I earlier said. Like, we want him to be very comfortable. We never put pressure on him. We never ask him to do too many things. He just had to go there and bat is normal. If he fails, then it's up to the number five, six, seven guys to control and try and get the run. So we always kept him very calm, cool. He, he's a guy who doesn't want to get involved in anything, just bat. He loves batting. So we want him to do that uh, continuously the World Cup. I think when we started, <clears throat> we knew, especially when we came to India, to play in Delhi, that's the time the entire team realized we have a very good chance to win this World Cup. I think that's what happened. Now, if I look across the gentleman in front of me, all great captains, and the fact is all of you performed and led from the front, you know, beat with the bat, beat with the ball, key moments as a captain, as a leader, you were there. Steve, I'm coming to you. You know, you had a legacy being passed on to you. You had to carry on the mantle. Even when you came up 99, 2003, there were stumbling blocks, but you turned down amazing performances. How do you do that? I guess that's what you, you train for and that's the moment you want as a professional cricketer to be tested in the ultimate circumstances to see whether you're good enough to come through in that situation. So as a player, you, you want to be put in that situation. Um, yeah, 1999, we, we started off pretty poorly. We struggled against Scotland in the first match, just got across the line. Then we lost to New Zealand, lost to Pakistan. Uh, we probably put too much pressure on ourselves. And I think that's a danger for India in this World Cup, that they go in as favourites. And sometimes you can focus too much on the ultimate prize, winning the World Cup and forgetting about the process required to get there so we'd forgotten about that a bit we i think we forgot to enjoy our cricket uh, once we relaxed a bit more we started to play some excellent cricket but obviously the game or the whole series was on the line against south africa we all have our superstitions we know you had yours but did you also look at some telltale signs you know morning how is it the right side of the bed how the toss flows or the general mood did that always tell you this game's going to go our way or it's going to be a humdinger or we're going to lose this did you look, have I, I look back at that my, myself personally I had a, a meeting with the chairman of selectors the night before and it was pretty much uh, if you don't win and you don't perform then this may be your last game as captain so <laughs> it wasn't too much uh, it was a lot on the line but I think you know, sometimes you walk to the wicket and um, look I knew it was my probably one day career um, the team would have gone home if you lost that match I was extremely nervous walking out the bat, then all of a sudden I said to myself, relax, enjoy, go with the flow, you've done it before and trust yourself. And once we did that, things started to turn around, South Africa panicked a little bit and uh, we managed to turn that game around. Obviously went on to win the semi-final and saved our best for the final. Alright, on that note we'll take a very short break. The chat with the legends continues on the other side. Stay with us. All right, I'm going to quickly wind up this discussion with three objective questions to all of you. Very simple ones. Please pick out three game changers. 
across teams? You know, three people who you would like the viewers to watch out for across teams. I'll start with you, Clive. Three players? Yeah. Hmm? Three players. Yeah, three players. Batsmen, bowlers, keepers, irrespective. Well, I would, I would think that um, Chris Gale could be a guy that would be somebody you'd have to look out for. Saywag. Um, and I would think the fellow Watson from Australia. I think he, he's a very strong player. And once he, he gets in, I think he can really he can take a game away from them. So there you go, Gale, Sehwag and Watson. A couple for you? I will go with Watson, definitely, because uh, he's, uh, the way he's uh, seen me playing against England was tremendous. Uh, he left his game. Uh, we've seen in IPL also, but uh, uh, I have, uh, I'll pick the fast bowler stain. I think what I've seen, again, recent yeah. uh, form is very, very important. And the way he bowled uh, in South Africa, maybe he doesn't going to get uh, those type of pitches, but I think his uh, movement off the wicket was tremendous. And third, uh, there's many cricketers, it's very difficult to, to put uh, a name, but I think again, you, you pick your country, man, because you're seeing and you're watching your own cricketer much closely than other people, so you can't really say much uh, on other cricketer. But I, I think I have uh, Patan has become much more mature what he was before. Alan leanings towards the all-rounders and bowlers for for, for, for one of the greatest all-rounders yeah, himself. So I, <laughs> yeah, no surprises, but great choices there from couple. Yeah. Are your picks different? Well, slightly so different. If I, if I look at, uh, say, South Africa, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, A.B. de Villiers. Uh, I think he's got a fantastic game for one-day cricket. Uh, he's very quick between the wickets. He can hit the big shots, but he can play the, the sensible knock if required in the middle of the order. So I think he's a key man for South Africa. Uh, for the Australians, uh, obviously we've talked about Watson at the top of the order. That's always a key position. Uh, to me, it might depend a little bit on Ricky Ponting and his form, because he's been a key player in... You know, most of the games he's played for Australia, but in recent times hasn't played at his absolute best, so I think he might be someone to watch, a uh, key player from the Australian's point of view. And uh, look, watch out for Kyron Pollard as well from uh, the West Indies, dangerous player. Um, gives the ball an almighty thump, so on the smaller grounds here, uh, depending on the wickets we get, uh, he could be he could be one, one to run watch. could make a difference for you 30 of 10 balls can change the game all together most definitely it? and obviously uh, the Sri Lankans have got uh, a lot of good cricketers uh, I, I've always had a soft spot for Jay Wadner I think he's a very good player your picks Arjuna I think if you, if you take the uh, the Sri Lankans I think it's Jawadana Sangakara show for sure but generally I feel Sevag is a very dangerous guy with Gale but uh, I feel someone like Mendis can be uh, really, really interesting in this part of the world, and especially with teams like South Africa, maybe Australia, England. Uh, India has played him pretty well, but uh, apparently he has been bowling pretty well in the last couple of months. So we have to wait and see. It's, it's, it's like uh, for me, you need a proper team to win a tournament, like up to quarterfinals. Like it's like getting into form. But you play really well on that particular day, you will get to the semis. You play well on the semis, you get to the finals. That's the way it goes, especially with the present uh, status of the World Cup. Well said, Arjuna. Steve, your pick. Look tough. I, I agree with all those selections, so I'll probably go a bit left field now. I think uh, Malinga from Sh Sri Lanka is probably the best one-day one bowler in the world for quick wise. Um, I think he'll have an impact. I think Graham Swan for England will... will um, if he's decided to do well, he's got to play well. And I think for Australia, Brad Haddon is capable of turning a match. So three names are a little bit different, but I certainly agree with all the names mentioned before. But there may be three from left field a bit. I'm a little stumped. Nobody's mentioned Sachin Tendulkar. This could perhaps be his last World Cup. He's in the form of his life. He scored the best. Of, you know, he's had an amazing uh, year so far. And uh, I think you've all just given that, you know, Sachin's going to be performing. Well, he's <laughs> 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 that year as a host. He's just expected to do it, so yeah, you sort of leave yeah. him out. The important fact is for someone like Sachin, he will play a very important innings at the right time. Like, he, he won't be a guy who will come like Seva or um, Gale and play like really, really uh, tough innings. But he will be a very interesting character in the middle. I think India will need him to, if in India going to win, India needs him to perform as well. Well, we know he's going to start at the top and he's going to go explode. <laughs> I, think, I think his experience uh, will help the team uh, if he is hang around. You know, the team should play around him because he's the person who can play very big shots. We've seen him many, many years in time. 
and uh, he knows how to stay if the other people can start going after the bowling. He is still there to play 50 overs and his temperament shows that he can hang around there and keep on picking one and two, one and two and the other six batsmen Indian team have who can be ruthless on their given day. Absolutely. Mm. The other thing we have Jonathan Trott, nobody yeah. talked yeah. about, he's batting pretty well and you have Swan who's not a bad little bowler. So the bowlers too can then play, play their part. One of the things that I think we, we didn't really have a good discussion on this six days before a game. Mm. I think in one day game you need to carry on after the, you know, you don't mm -hmm. want to wait and you, you, lose momentum. And yeah, you, sure. you lose the yeah. momentum yeah. quite quickly. Right. So I think it might be a situation where it might be too long for some teams. Mm. Closing and question. In these, you I'm know, going to ask you to wear your question. punter hats on, punting hats on. The punter is not here, but you'll have to wear the punting. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest chance, 10 being the highest probability, chance that West Indies will go to the final. I'm not saying they'll win the World Cup. Go to the final. Well, I hope they do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would think it can be about 7. 7, seven, seven on 10, that's a high score. Couple for India? I think 50-50, 50% is a very, very high number. If they, they said 50-50, that means you are in the final. I, I would say uh, if they come to the final, <coughs> that's good enough for me. Good enough for you. Yeah, look, it's all about getting through that quarter final. Those, that's when the, the knockout stage we'll starts. The number, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking Australia, hmm? seven. Seven, seven on ten. ten. So West Indies, seven. Australia, seven. Arjuna? I think Sri Lanka will get to the finals. I think the way they are playing, uh, and home advantage, the public doesn't put pressure on Sri Lankans. So they, we play most of the games back home. I, I feel that they have a pretty, pretty decent chance again, which we never had. Sri Lanka will be play the final. I think so. Yes. So 10, 10 on 10. 10. 10. 10 on 10. 10 on 10. 10 on 10. Not even combination. I'm with Alan. I think uh, Australia, you know, potentially could win it and they potentially could lose in the quarterfinals. Um, I'm going to 7. 7 on 10. I'm underdog, so I'm happy. You're going uh, my team goes as the underdog. I'm, uh, I'm much well, happier. The fact is, this time way. India going as one of the favourites and not the, the yeah, odds are 9 on 10 actually for India to make to the final. Mm. Team that you would not want to play in the final. Oh, I'm closing the discussion now. Quickly, um, quickly. One team you don't want in the final against the West Indies. Australia, probably. Australia. India. Uh, Couple. Definitely Australia. Australia. <laughs> um, I'll go Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Pakistan. Pakistan. India. India. At least somebody said India. Gentlemen, thank you very much. It was a fantastic discussion. And we look forward to more from your end and your effort to keep the game clean. Fingers crossed on that. And let's hope that we have got a fantastic World Cup. First time, no protests, no problems, either in Sri Lanka or in India or in Bangladesh. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks a lot for joining. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure.